Hey guys, this is Dr. Shivam. Congratulations to all those who have made through this neat PG and to all those who are still in line not to get worried, not to quit. Huh? Many exams are in line for you. AIMS PGI May is there for you not to get worried and for those who are targeting May, May, May AIMS in PGI for them I would like to say that Michael Jordan have once said I have failed over and over and over again and that is why I succeed at the present time it's okay to fail man it's totally okay to fail but not okay to quit okay so it's a big message to all of you who are still preparing there is a big opportunity lined up for you in AIMS in PGI you know some succeed because they are destined while others succeed because they are determined your determination should be as high as anything so you should not get demotivated at this present and my this video is basically the goal will be to motivate you to study your previous exam papers because guys the funda you all know is to study and to master the previous year's question especially for the PGI people they are very fond of asking the important topics of their own so please go through their previous year question and as I get time I'll be making you making for you and discussing you in this uh, video sessions so let me let me ask you in gully boy style bhai log padega kya so friends if I ask you how is the Josh I repeat how is the Josh it should be hi brother so starting with the May PGI 2017 questions number one is pre malignant lesions of oral cavity so if you ask me ki, what are the pre malignant lesions of the oral cavity I will name you five lesions the leukoplakia, the erythroplakia, lichen planus, submucosal fibrosis, and melanosis and mucosal hyperpigmentation. So these are the five pre-malignant lesions for oral cavity. So here the answer becomes lichen planus and erythroplakia. I repeat, the pre-malignant lesions are erythroplakia, leukoplakia, melanosis, some mucosal fibrosis and lichen planus. The erythroplakia among them has the maximum risk that is the 50% risk of malignant degeneration and you should also know what is this Bowen's disease and Bessette's disease. Bowen's disease also called squamous cell carcinoma in situ is a form of intraepidermal carcinoma that is a malignant tumor of keratinocytes and it ultimately progresses to an invasive squamous cell carcinoma okay while the Behesset disease is oculo orogenital syndrome it means it has three typical features oculo the having uveitis oro having aphthous like ulcers in oral cavity and genital is genital ulceration so now you can answer this and you know everything about this question and I hope you will be able to answer if asked. So this is a leukoplakia, tongue, erythroplakia in oral cavity and erythroleukoplakia. So if asked maximum it will be erythroleukoplakia and this is showing the lichen planus. Now moving to the second question asked in PGI May 2017 is true about foreign bodies of air passage in child in children except now you have to take care of these words except so they are asking except so if you read the options vegetable foreign bodies are not common although they are common this means this option will be there in the answer tracheal obstruction can cause sudden death okay I will analyze it later more common in right bronchus more common in children less than 4 years of age. CT scan of chest is done in all the cases. Now if we go through detail of this question, you know there in Dhingra there is a statement written that children are more affected, more than half of them are below 4 years of age. This means this statement is right. 
now more foreign bodies enter in the right bronchus because it is wider and more in line with the tracheal lumen it means this is also right now x-ray of chest are of great help and bronchoscopy may be done as a diagnostic investigation but ct is not needed in all the cases so it is also one it will be one of the answer and tracheal obstruction may cause sudden death is not the true one okay i will tell you what are the symptoms and sign in case of obstruction of foreign body at different level now if a foreign body is stuck at the larynx it can cause complete obstruction leading to death but not sudden partial obstruction will cause stridor hoarseness cough respiratory difficulty if it is in trachea it will cause choking stridor wheeze cough if it is in bronchus it will cause cough wheeze and diminished air entry you know the foreign body in bronchus shows a triad of symptoms and these triad these three things is are cough wheeze and diminished air entry to that part of the lung this means there will be respiratory distress with this with the swallowing of foreign body and lung and lung collapse and emphysema may occur but you should remember the three triad cough wheeze and diminished air entry okay now moving to the another one deformities occurring in leprosy patient is r now here i will tell you the right answers it is facial leni lenio leonina saddle nose and lagophthalmos low set ear and micrognathia are not a symptom of leprosy now among if you see the features of lepro, leprosy deformities occurring in it in face you see a mask face or facies leonina sagging face lagophthalmos loss of eyebrows and eyelashes if in hand it, it may cause claw hand wrist drop ulcers absorption of digits in feet it will cause plantar ulcer foot drop inversion of foot clawing micrognathia micrognathia which is there in the option is a condition in which jaw is undersized and it is basically a craniofacial condition rather than seen in leprosy okay so if we if as for just knowledge it is seen in treacher collins syndromes and stickler syndrome and hemifacial microsomia so these are the condition where you will find micrognathia and low set ear is also a condition which can be seen in down syndrome turner syndrome noonan's patau's and many other congenital abnormality but not in leprosy now which of the following is are true about leforce fracture now leforce fracture is a interesting topic and uh, you should know about them but here they are asking which all, all are true now we will read them one by one it is a fracture of zygomatic bone no not only zygomatic there are three types of leforce fracture may cause csf rhinorrhea yes it is true type 1 i will discuss and classified as 1 2 5 th- no it is class- classified only into 3 leforce 1 2 3 this means the answer here becomes may cause csf rhinorrhea now this this is are the fracture lines showing you leforort 1 2 3 leforort 1 is a transverse fracture which runs above and parallel to the palate you can see here the hard palate and it is just running above in parallel and crosses the lower part of the nasal septum maxillary antra and the pterygoid plates so this is the lower part of the nasal septum this is the palate so this is a transverse fracture line just passing above the palate and below the nasal septum leaf for two is a pyramidal fracture you can see a pyramid being formed okay that passes through the root of the nose lacrimal bone floor of the orbit upper part of the maxillary sinus and the pterygoid place so it is a pyramidal fracture coming to the leaf for three it is basically a craniofacial disjunction okay so here cranium is getting detached from the facial part and there is complete separation of facial bone from the cranial bones this means the fracture line is passing through the root of the nose ethmofrontal junction superior orbital fissure lateral wall of orbit and many others that you need not to know okay the things you need to know is the three types of leforort fracture and the line passing through them now a ct will be the best but x ray may be helpful to means exclude them and the fract and delineate them the right type of fracture and we prefer a ct scan of face with 3d reconstruction okay so the 3d reconstruction gives us a clear picture of the fracture 
Now coming to the which of the following is true about Schwarz sign. Now you should know ki what is Schwarz sign. Okay, so Schwarz sign is basically a reddish hue over the promontory caused by increased vascularity of the bone immediately under the periosteum and may be seen in the early stage of the disease in otosclerosis. So basically Schwarz sign also called as or known as flamingo flush sign or rising sun sign is may be associated with otospongiosis phase in the active phase of the otosclerosis. So this one is a very important sign. You can see here the reddish hue over the promontory that can be seen from behind the tympanic intact tympanic membrane. Okay, so this is the short sign or the flamingo pink blush seen in otosclerosis. Now if we read the options what they are trying to say we can see ki what all can be right here. Now sign of inactive disease no as I said it is a sign of active disease. Now it can be an indication of surgery okay so B is the right answer. More common during pregnancy yes it is, it is right reddish over the promontory right right and seen in the early stages of the otosclerosis right. So this is also done. Moving to the which of the following is true about T stage of the maxillary sinus carcinoma. Now this is something you need to go through the T staging of the maxillary sinus carcinoma. So here stage T4A denotes frontal sinus involvement and T3 denotes ethmoid sinus involvement. So sometimes they repeat the same question so at least you should know or remember the correct options which I am telling you and later you can go through the T staging for the maxillary sinus carcinoma. I have given it here pause it and note it down. Now contraindication to cochlear implant is or are. Now before moving to this question we should know ki what are the contraindication or absolute contraindication. Now if we want to know the absolute indicate contraindication these are agenesis of cochlea, agenesis of cochlear nerve, severe mental retardation or disease, acute or chronic otitis media, mental retardation to cooperate with the speech training. So these are the some contraindication for implantation. Some relative are inappropriate medical condition like pulmonary, cardiac, hematological problems, uncontrolled epilepsy and not able to be uh, available for post-operative rehabilitation. So these are some of the relative. But if we now go to the uh, options which were given there, we see Mondini deformity. So what is Mondini deformity? It is basically absence of apical modiolus and interscalar septum resulting in an incomplete partitioning of the cochlea together with an enlarged vestibular aqueduct and dilated vestibule. So basically it is not the complete uh, deformity or the degeneration of cochlea and here cochlear implantation has been described as an effective tool for treating sensory neural hearing loss due to incomplete partitioning. So it is not a contraindication while Michael aplasia, Michael aplasia was a contraindication for cochlear implantation. Also, intracochlear ossification is not a contraindication or absolute contraindication for cochlear implantation. You see, the Ballinger Otorhinolaryngology book says intracochlear ossification is not a contraindication to cochlear implantation but can limit the type and insertion and the depth of electrode array that can be introduced into the cochlea. Okay, so likewise, congenital malformation of cochlea are not contraindication to cochlear implantation. Although Michael aplasia, like complete aplasia or the agenesis of, agenesis of cochlea is a contraindication and agenesis of cochlear nerve or eight nerve is an absolute contraindication, okay? Any infective stage like chronic infective is a, a state of the middle ear or mastoid cavity is also a contraindication. Now you should also know ideal candidate for cochlear implantation. So severe to profound SNHL that is sensory neural hearing loss functional auditory nerve, good speech, language and communication skill and not benefit enough from other kinds of hearing aid. So you should know before giving cochlear implantation, it is mandatory to have or to give 
a trial of hearing aid to the child so we should also prescribe we should always prescribe hearing aid before trying for cochlear implantation now the final question true about development of cochlea so this is the last question which was asked in the ENT section of uh, May 2017 so basically of about the development of cochlea but from only your dhingra from your basic book okay so here the answer is cochlea start developing from third week and completes by 20 week of gestation so the answer becomes A and C it starts by third week and develops completes by 20 weeks so there is a statement in dhingra that the development begins at third week and completes by 20 weeks okay so it's not something very high fi they have asked but the same thing which is given in your basic book dhingra so i think this has completed the questions asked in your may part and the last thing which i would like to say you is that you are so close so close to the victory don't ever think of giving up now so you can do it and you will do it if i can believe you so you can in yourself so this is dr shivam signing off and wishing you lots of good luck happiness and all the very best thank you